Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can analyze the pandemic video. So there was this video that came out on YouTube that promoted this conspiracy theory around vaccine safety and effectiveness, as well as coronavirus. The video was taken down, but of course, many other people have uploaded it to other places. So millions of people have watched this video. The video features an interview with a scientist named Judy Mikovits. She makes a number of extraordinary claims during the video. I won't cover all of them, but I'll try to get through a few key statements here. So we see a classic anti-vaccination position espoused in this video. So we see these ideas like vaccinations are dangerous, people that promote them are just out for money, high-ranking government officials are in a conspiracy, they throw people who try to tell the truth in prison, and only anti-vaccination people can figure out what the evil people are up to. Now, Mikovits claimed that she was in prison for speaking out against the conspirators. So she tried to tell the truth, and they put her in prison. Her rights were violated. She did not receive due process. Evidence was planted in her house, and she was not allowed to call her 97 witnesses. This is what she says in the video. I'm not making that up. So what really happened here? Well, she was arrested for stealing lab notebooks, a computer, and some other materials. She was not convicted. Therefore, she maintains the presumption of innocence. But either way, the story that she promoted in this video was not true. Here we see that she is flipping the narrative, turning a negative into a positive. This tactic is exceedingly popular with conspiracy theorists. She took her arrest and constructed a story around it that made her look like a hero. She was a whistleblower, somebody who stood up against the mighty power of people who conduct research on vaccines, right? Because allegedly they're a really dangerous crowd. Now, Mikovits is known to be anti-vaccination, but in this video, she tries a different tactic. Now she says she supports vaccines. I guess in some way that's just not apparent to anybody actually looking at the evidence. Something else interesting about Mikovits, she published an article about retroviruses and chronic fatigue syndrome. Now this article was retracted. The reason it was retracted is because it had poor research methodology. So as we look at this, she was arrested for taking something that wasn't hers, and she doesn't understand research methodology. Evidently, this is what makes her credible in the eyes of conspiracy theorists. Everything gets flipped around. Her article was retracted because the evildoers were trying to keep the knowledge suppressed, right? So the narrative just gets moved around. Everything negative becomes a positive. So conspiracy theorists never have to defend anything because everything that they would normally have to defend, they can turn around into something they use to attack. Mikovits also claimed that Dr. Fauci is in on this conspiracy. She said that his propaganda promoting behavior cost millions of people their lives. Now, she has no actual evidence to support this. I guess we're just supposed to take her word for it. Mikovits pretty much uses every conspiracy theory catchphrase in one video, including two of my favorites. Conspirators are out to make billions of dollars by killing millions of people. And this idea that she knows how to connect the dots. Now, there's one particular statement in this video that I've received a number of questions about. Mikovits said that a research study indicated that if somebody was vaccinated for influenza, their risk of getting coronavirus increased by 36%. I found this claim to be pretty interesting, so I pulled the article that was referenced in the video. It was published in January of 2020, and I read it. This study was essentially examining the influenza vaccine and what's referred to as virus interference. Specifically, they had participants who were vaccinated and others who were not vaccinated, and they wanted to see if either group was more likely to get respiratory infections. Overall, they found that people who were vaccinated with the flu virus were 59% more likely to have no pathogen detected at the end of the study. So people who had the flu vaccine were actually safer in terms of respiratory infection. Now, because the study was looking at numerous types of respiratory infections, they broke down the analysis across various types of viruses, including coronavirus. Now, specifically for coronavirus, they found that the odds ratio from vaccinated to not vaccinated was 1.36. 
This is where we get the idea of 36%. So again, the group that was vaccinated was at a 36% greater risk to get coronavirus. So technically, the finding was that if somebody had the vaccine, they were more at risk to get coronavirus, but that's not the end of the story. First of all, the coronavirus referenced in this article was not SARS-CoV-2, right? That's a completely different coronavirus. So we're not talking about the coronavirus that causes COVID-19. The next point, and I think this is also important because it shows kind of how she misunderstood the research. In the reference section for that article, they list other articles that had findings on this topic. One of them, a study published in 2013, had this finding. There was no association between influenza vaccination and the detection of coronavirus. So right there in the very article that she referenced is a reference to another article that refutes the claim about coronavirus. What Mikovits did was known as cherry picking. She selected a specific finding in a specific article and then promoted that finding as if it represented the truth, right? So she overgeneralized. Now, this behavior shouldn't be particularly surprising from somebody who does not seem to understand research methodology. Now, another thing I find interesting here about this particular claim, Mikowitz believes that research funding is reserved for people that are in a conspiracy. So from her point of view, scientific literature is not valid. Yet, in an attempt to support her argument, she cites a study published in a peer-reviewed journal. I thought those studies were supposed to be inaccurate. I guess they're just inaccurate until she finds something in a study that supports her point of view. I think I understand now. I was able to connect the dots. Now, how is this good science? I can scour scientific literature and find support for almost any theory that anybody could come up with. There is always going to be variability in findings. That's how data works. If I went into a city and selected a person who was a millionaire, would I then conclude that every person in that city was a millionaire? Now, sticking with that analogy, what Mikovits did was even worse. She would go into a city and talk to as many people as she needed to find one millionaire and then say that everybody was a millionaire. The antidote to conspiratorial thinking is critical thinking. I simply read the scientific literature and interpreted it based on logic and reason. Conspiracy theorists are banking on the idea that people will not do that. Conspiracy theories like this are quite dangerous. They exploit people's need for certainty in uncertain times. They exploit the human tendency to believe instead of disbelief as an initial reaction. And they exploit the tendency toward confirmation bias. People see evidence that supports their current position. The anti-vaccination movement is an anti-science movement. As the stress of this pandemic continues to build, people need to stay more alert than ever to the hazards of consuming misinformation. Now, I know whenever I talk about topics like the anti-vaccination movement, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.